Today's topic is how to make financial stewardship a key to donor stewardship. We are thrilled to have Tammy, Tammy Batchelor and Jamie Lundin from Cause and Solutions share their expertise alongside Blackwad's own Greg Shepard. Tammy Batchelor is the COO and partner at Cause and Solution and has more than 20 years of fundraising and managed services experience working with community research and healthcare system foundations across the country. She has a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration from Regis University, maintains a fundraising executive certification, is a certified BCRE Pro, and is a member of the Association of Professional Researchers for Advancement. Jamie Lynn Bean is the CFO and partner at Cause and Solution and has been working in the accounting field for more than 18 years with specific experience in healthcare philanthropy for more than 10 years. She resides in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and has a Master of Business Administration with a bachelor's degree in accounting, and is also accredited CPA within the state of Colorado. And finally, Greg Shepard is the VP of Sales for Financial Solutions at Blackbaud and has been at Blackbaud for over 18 years, working with nonprofits all across industry sectors uh, to support their financial accounting, compliance, and stewardship needs. Greg resides in Charleston, South Carolina, and has a Bachelor of Science in Accounting and Business from the College of Charleston. So now, without further ado, I will turn the time over to Greg. Thank you, Elise. Appreciate the introduction. Um, Tammy and Jamie, nice to be with you guys today. Yeah, well, great. I'm here. I'm, I'm really excited to get together and uh, discuss this really important topic. Uh, I know Jamie and I, we, we did a session together uh, pretty recently, and uh, happy to have Tammy join us to share her experience and perspective uh, on financial stewardship. This time, it won't be just two accountants talking about um, financial stewardship. We'll, we'll get we'll get some some different perspective. So I'm looking forward to that today. Um, just as a, a recap for our audience, what we're going to cover this afternoon. Um, is really just a, a four-step agenda. We're going to discuss what financial stewardship is and why it's important. We're going to talk about what makes financial stewardship challenging sometimes. We're going to talk about how we can potentially use technology to improve financial stewardship. And then finally, we're going to look at uh, some graphs of what financial stewardship, good financial stewardship looks like. You guys ready to go? Yeah, let's do this. All right. So, Jamie, much like we did last time, we'll do a little bit of Q&A session here where I'll ask some questions and we'll have a good conversation. Uh, Tammy, we'll, 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 we'll get you right into the flow here with, with us. So, um, so the, the real question that we want to start with is what, what is this idea of financial stewardship? And maybe how is that different than just the concept of stewardship and donor stewardship, so there's a lot of stewardship words floating around. What do we mean when we talk about financial stewardship? Yeah, so it's a great, it's a great question. It's a, you know, I think it's, it's one of the things that folks in this industry face all the time. And uh, I, when I think of stewardship, there's kind of the two key components to it, and you, and you touched on them both, Greg, uh, financial stewardship and donor stewardship. So. Um, and, and it's kind of important to level set that, you know, what, what's the difference between the two of them. So in general, stewardship really involves the managing of gifts as donors intended, uh, be able, being able to provide uh, feedback to those donors uh, on the use of their gifts and, and the money that they've given to the organization, uh, that it is meeting those uh, restrictions that were placed on it by the donor, uh, as well as being able to get, you know, real concrete data back to them um, and, and really that donor relationship is so key, especially, you know, when in this, this meeting we're really kind of focusing on that a little bit. It, it's cultivating those donors and making sure that they're getting everything they need, um, that they feel comfortable continuing to give to the organization. So the finance, financial stewardship piece of it comes into play, and that's really the systems and the methods that are aimed at demonstrating that fiscal accountability and reporting so that you can see the impact of those philanthropic efforts philanthropic efforts to donors and other key stakeholders, whether that be the IRS, you know, the board members, other folks in the community that might be, uh, have a vested interest in the organization. So 
uh, you know, I've long said this, you know, they, they kind of go together, right? You can't have one without the other. You need good folks on the, the donor stewardship side as well as good systems in place from the financial stewardship to really have a really good overall stewardship program. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Jamie, and I think good financial stewardship um, is good donor stewardship. And a lot of times people, when they think of stewardship, they think about just that relationship building side of the house. But when you can show that their donations are being stewarded as they intended, I think that, that says more than anything to the donor. Yeah, that's a really good point, Tammy. I appreciate you adding that. Um, so I, I'm going to ask you the next question. So we talk about the financial stewardship. Why, why, is, this, why is this so important to the, the development of fundraising profession? You know, I think a lot of times because, you know, donors can stop giving if they don't feel like their donations are being stewarded properly. And I think it's really the number one reason donors do stop giving because their gift may be, uh, they don't see that it was used as they intended it to be. And if they don't have that trust in the foundation, then they lose that. And unfortunately, you know, development staff, they work so hard every day to develop those relationships and steward those relationships. And if something happens um, on that aspect of the finance side, where they don't, they lose that trust, then they may lose, you know, current donation or future donations. And that's really hard. That's really heartbreaking for a fundraiser, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just kind of my two cents too to just kind of piggyback on what what Tammy said. I mean, I think the key to this is everything boils down to trust, right? When a donor gives money to the organization, they're trusting that you use it in the way that they intended. And you know, how do we demonstrate that we're doing that? The, the fundraisers themselves can't do that, right? They can say, sit there and talk to their blue in the face that we're going to use this as intended, but without that concrete, you know, the facts to support that, you know, in the way of here's exactly how that, what that money went for and being able to show and grab reports really easily to, to prove that, um, you know, it only goes so far. So being able to bring that component in really helps the fundraisers as they cultivate those donors and, and maintain the trust of those donors to help then continue to give well into the future for that organization. Tammy, can you speak a little bit to what you've seen in the field as far as the efficiency around stewardship and uh, how, how us guys on the financial side can best arm fundraisers with information to, to make their jobs easier from a stewardship perspective? Yeah, definitely. Well. You know, I, I do see some challenges with um, from the development fundraiser operations type perspective, and the issue that I hear the most from my healthcare clients is that there tends to be some miscommunication between the finance teams and development teams as far as discrepancies in reporting. Um, and if they can just work together to develop that common language, and they understand that there's a purpose for both fundraising and financial systems, they can work in tandem, and then they can really be. Um, confident that the numbers that they're putting out, the numbers that they're giving their donors, the information they're giving back to their donors is correct. Yeah, part of that good communication is really letting the fundraisers do what they're really good at, which is getting out there and building those relationships and working with donors and, and letting the finance folks get that information to them to perform those stewardship functions. Um, right, and a lot I, of I times that, what I find, Greg, is that you know, fundraisers don't believe the finance numbers um, sometimes because they don't, they don't believe in what's being reported. And then finance actually can't report on certain items because of fiduciary responsibilities that they have or GAAP. And so um, and then I, I do see a lot of the back and forth saying, you know, well, this, isn't cor this number isn't correct on the financials. Um, and a lot of times it has to do with primarily like gift and kind reporting. Um, I know especially with the recent COVID um, activity and donations that have come in. Um, people have been very generous with, uh, with dollars, but they've also been giving a lot of gifting kinds as far as masks and food and those type of things. Well, on the finance side, um, if, if those teams haven't worked together to kind of pull, you know, decide what they're going to do with those gifting kinds, maybe that doesn't show up as a donation. And, and if I can just interject one thing here, Greg, because uh, Tammy yeah. touched on something that I think is really important. When we talk about, and I, I don't want to go back, but when we talk about that trust aspect, it's not necessarily just external stakeholders, right, like donors. It's also internal stakeholders like the development staff. And when Tammy said, 
if they're getting wrong information and they lose the trust that the information they do receive is accurate, then they're not going to pass that along or they're not going to look too closely at it. And so having those systems in place to not only maintain the trust externally but also internally is a really key component to that financial stewardship piece. Yeah, it's a really, really good point. Um, Tammy, I, I know we talked in, in preparation for this a little bit about some things that we see out in the in the field about with, with folks using trying to use our Razor's Edge product as a financial database. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and some of the challenges there? Yeah, definitely. I think um, a lot of times people try to use the Razor's Edge as their financial database. And I do find that some finance teams come through and say, you absolutely cannot record this gift. And, and pr primarily I find it, like I said, around gift in kind, <clears throat> but also for grants that are awarded to the hospital. Um, a lot of times they're already being recorded on the hospital's financials. And some of the foundation teams might have helped write and administer those grants, so they're a little bit frustrated that they can't record that information. But if you have the Razor's Edge and the Financial Edge, you can record that grant in the Razor's Edge and then just maybe not have um, the link between Razor's Edge and Financial Edge. There are GL distributions. And so you could leave those blank so that you can ensure it's recorded in the Razor's Edge, but it's not flowing across to the Financial Edge. And that will help you so that it's not being recorded, you know, duplicative, being recorded on the hospital books and the foundation books. Um, and as far as like there's some age, uh, there was a lot of questions around that with AHP guidelines. And with um, AHP, if you're participating in the benchmarking uh, reporting, you absolutely should not be recording those numbers in your finance numbers. Um, but again, they, they, they do leave it up to uh, the foundations to determine with their finance department whether or not it should be recorded on the foundation's books. So it sounds like when we when we put the Razor's Edge in concert with the Financial Edge, we get a much better uh, output as far as being able to perform really really good solid stewardship, and and really those sides working together as a team help create that environment, right, Jamie? Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, I do work with several organizations that have been very good about having that open line of communication between the operations departments and the finance departments to say, hey, we can record it in the razor's edge and it doesn't have to come across the GL. And then, but the operations side really needs to understand the finance side of the house that, they, that there are certain things they cannot book. Um, so, and they're not trying to like short you of a donation that you've worked very hard to secure. It's just that they, ask, they can't record it in the financials. So I think if there's that understanding, again, between those teams, um, I mean, I feel like that um, then they can trust the numbers together. Something that I, that I love about Razor's Edge NXT is that you actually can set the revenue uh, settings. And what we've done in the past is working with the finance team is say, okay, what, there are rev different revenue settings. There's a committed and there's a received revenue setting. So we worked with the finance department and said, okay, so the committed revenue can be more like productivity, so counting pledges and plan gifts. Um, so if you have the plan gift module, you can pull that information directly across to Financial Edge and pull that productivity into um, your financial reports. Um, and then uh, with the uh, received revenue setting, we try to make that more of like a cash flow um, with pledge payments and so on. So it really does help to secure and, I mean, and kind of communicate about how those uh, revenue settings will be because then when they go, um, fundraisers go into the Razor's Edge NXT and pull a report, it, it matches or it's pretty close. You know, there's always going to be a, a few things that might be off, but they're not going to be completely off. Yeah, it'd be easy to, easy to reconcile those and um, that common platform and common language and the communication really helps a lot in that. It does, definitely. Jamie can, you think, Jamie, can you think of some other types of challenges that are created when, when we don't have these systems that work together hand in glove like uh, Razor's Edge and Financial Edge? Yeah, I, I mean, when we're talking about, you know, these, these two systems, we're really, you know, these, when, we, when we see a well-oiled machine, the organizations that really have this together, it's the, 
the fact that they have this kind of integrated solution, not just with RE to FE, right, but then also having uh, uh, integration with, you know, the parent company, right? So you kind of have this overall integrated solution, and that's what, you know, is when you really see it humming along pretty smoothly, that's what you see. And when you don't have that, what you do have is you have a lot of manual processes, and you have a lot of Excel spreadsheets, and you have a lot of time being consumed by creating manual reports, and very little very little um, items are getting produced right out of the system because you don't have that functionality when they're not integrated. And so what happens when you uh, have these manual processes? You get more chance for errors, more opportunity for mistakes. And so also with nonprofits, you know, almost across the board, one of the biggest challenges is resources and, and how do we best use our resources and, and what we have to be able to, to spend on those resources. And so when you don't have an integrated solution, you end up spending time and money um, doing manual processes, admin type work that can be negated by having that integrated solution and free up folks to go out and raise money, do the things that they were intended to do when they were hired, and, and items that will better further the organization moving forward. Yeah, I mean, the, the, these processes, anytime we're dealing with restricted revenue, the processes are really complex. I mean, it's not a not an out-of-the-box thing for most uh, solutions to be able to handle. And and really handling that, that extra level of complexity, if you don't have the efficiency, you can really get into a lot of instances where, you know, you, you have a lot of, a lot of wasted effort, but also things don't go off as timely as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when you talk about you know, some of the guidelines that you have to follow from a financial perspective, there certainly is that, right? And you risk uh, opportunities for, you know, um, issues coming up in an audit, you know, issues coming up with a 990, some of the regulatory items that you have to, to follow from a financial perspective uh, can be impacted by not having that system because you could miss things, you could, um, and, and when we come, when we come circle back to this whole stewardship aspect, right, and, and, and may, you know, misappropriation of funds, which is really what happens when you don't use restricted funds as, as they're intended, uh, then you run into issues. And, and uh, I know whenever I was, you know, was at the last, the last place we worked for the healthcare system, you know, the number one reason that change happened was because it came up in an audit report, right? Uh, we, got this, we got this audit, no, we need to make this change. People seem to be hesitant to make change outside of that when really you should be, you know, trying to make those ahead of the time and getting this integrated system so you don't have those type of notes on your audit and, and have those things come up in a report. So uh, by having that solution, you really mitigate that risk associated with some of those items. Yeah, people always think that accountants' least favorite color is red, uh, <laughs> but nonprofit accountants, their, their least favorite color is orange. Um, right because of the, the jumpsuits are almost always orange um, <laughs> right. with the misappropriation. Really yep. And, you know, Jamie and I have worked together for, what, 10 years at least? Oh, I've always that now. Myself on the operations side, Jamie on the finance side, and I'm always, you know, reporting to fundraisers. You know, and, and, a, and a lot of times um, Jamie would just help me to understand these things, the 990s and the audits and things, because you can't just go – uh, changing, like uh, I'd have a lot of fundraisers say, well, John Smith likes to give to this fund, but I'm going to change it to this fund because we need money there. I'm like, absolutely not. Right. You know, Jamie helped me to understand that only a donor can restrict a gift. Right. Um, so there's a lot of things I think that maybe if the fundraising side of the house and the finance side of the house can get together and educate one another on those items, you know, it just makes the relationship all the better. Yeah, and I think that when we talk about an integrated solution, it's not just from a software perspective, right? It's from a people perspective as well. And having, when we talk about an integrated solution, we're talking about the development teams and the finance teams all working together. You know, like, like you said, Greg, it's a team sport. And you can have an integrated system all you want, but if you don't have two teams working together to get to one goal, you're going to run into issues anyways. Here, here. I love that. I love that. Well, we're going to take a couple of a seconds break here from uh, from our dialogue and our questioning. We're going to ask the audience a, a poll question and get them involved. Uh, I'm going to flip that up here on the screen for us. Um, but what we really want to know is what is your biggest challenge to when you try to effectively steward donors? Is it the accurate and timely financial reporting? 
the need for customized reporting, uh, the fact that you have separate systems or categorization discrepancies, or you're not, not on the same page or speaking the same language um, as your, your partners in the development or financial office. I'll give you guys a couple of seconds here to answer that question. We'll look at the results and chat about those. And then uh, once we chat about those, we're going to move on to maybe how technology can help us with the transformation with regards to financial stewardship. So the challenges, they broke down here. 25% of the uh, guests say accurate and timely financial reporting and uh, not on the same page, speaking the same language as the finance team, but over half the folks say the need for customized reporting. Uh, Tammy and Jamie, maybe you guys want to talk a little bit to those polls or poll results. Is that what you guys are seeing out in the field a lot of times? Definitely. Yes, I think so. Uh, I think those two, the two right at the top there, that, that 75%, um, and then, I mean, even uh, speaking the same language, that kind of goes back to what we were just talking about. But um, having those kind of customized reporting and the timely, I mean, to me, that timely piece from a finance perspective, that's what I hear the most, right? And now I know um, this is more on the donor side of it, so it makes a lot more sense that the customized reporting is coming into play here. And that's really what I like about the NXT environment is the ability to kind of use those dashboards and analysis tools uh, to kind of create those uh, kind of customized dashboards or, or reports and be able to easily get those out to end users or have them be able to get in there and see it. And so, yeah, I think that kind of lines up with what I see and what I hear from, from my work in the field as well. And, Tammy, you can speak to yours as well. Absolutely. And I think, Jamie, you kind of brought it up. That within Razor's Edge NXT, there is a customized reporting solution, um, an insights reporting solution. And, you know, you can do everything from reporting on, you know, how a particular fund or appeal is done to um, pro doing your moves management processing, um, how many days a prospect has been in a certain status. You know, you can actually set up the prospect statuses from identification to qualification to cultivation and solicitation. All of those steps, you can actually track how long those uh, donors have been in that status so that you can always keep up on the donors. And, and then w once they are in stewardship, you know, you can actually track how many days they've been in stewardship. You can make sure that someone has reached out to them recently. I think you guys knew what the next question is that I'm going to ask. Because <laughs> you guys both, both went there. Um, how, how, do, how do we get the technology in place that helps improve this financial stewardship? Well, you know, I, I think um, just being, being able to utilize Razor's Edge and, and RENXT is kind of the donor book of record to manage like the donor interactions and donor preferences, the gifts that are in the pipeline, um, gifts that are recorded with donor intent, and it flows through to financial ed you know, edge with that seamless integration. I mean, I, I feel like that's huge. Um, and then also within, you know, we, I talked a little bit before about the, if you have the plan giving module, which I'm a huge fan of, um, just because we can actually report on not just revenue but productivity. Um, because, and then we can also, if you didn't have the plan getting module, you could utilize the prospect module to report on pipeline items like major gifts and plan gifts. Um, because a lot of times people really just concentrate on maybe cost per dollar raised as their primary indicator, and it is a very important indicator, but cost per dollar secured that includes more of that, the revenue and productivity um, can give you more of a complete picture. Um, for me, I always feel like it's, you know, look, Cost per dollar raise is looking out the rear view mirror of how we did. The cost per dollar secured is looking through the front window to see how we're doing. Um, so I really feel like um, RENXT and FENXT are very good complements for each other to have that happen. That's a really good point, Tammy. Uh, Jamie, can you talk a little bit about how these integrated systems help improve accountability? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Tammy mentioned the whole idea of, you know, not making RE NXT or RE your, your financial database. That's not what it's geared for. That's not, that, that's not what it's meant to do. It is that donor database. And I, I know a lot of fundraisers say, well, you know, we don't, we don't need to, you know, get an FE or no FE or, you know, maybe even need FE or, or financial edge. And that, that really isn't the case either because 
there's a lot of functionality within Financial Edge NXT that the fundraisers can use to help them do their job better as well. And the improve the accountability is a, a key piece of that. You know, it, it improves the financial transparency uh, and accountability within your organization. And a lot of times, you know, when you don't have a system like a Financial Edge, maybe you just have you know, the parent organization, if it's a health care, you're using the hospital system. Well, a lot of times, you know, it takes weeks, if not months, to get reports back from the hospital system because many times the foundations are kind of last on the list as far as, you know, how resources get allocated and, and they're kind of low person on the totem pole. And, and it, by having this piece of it, which is really the foundation's piece, you get that, that, that information instantaneously. And one of the nice things that I really think that, you know, can help fundraisers and, and folks on the donor side of it is the ability to pull items into Financial Edge that, that do matter to them, like appeals, being able to pull appeals into Financial Edge. That way you can track expenses associated with events or maybe um, mailings or other fundraising efforts so you can truly see how you're doing from a fundraising perspective and know if that that effort makes sense to do it moving forward. I mean, if you're spending more money than you're making on a specific effort, then does it really make sense to, to do that moving forward? So the ability to get that type of information by having this integrated system allows you to make smarter decisions, you know, from an organizational standpoint and make better use of your limited resources. Jamie, I'm going to come then, back to you on this, yeah, this, this sorry, next and, topic because it really is risk mitigation. and. And as accountants, we really like risk mitigation. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it, it talks. And, and the other piece to that that goes into risk mitigation as well is the whole being able to get fund balances easily, right? That's that's the whole stewardship aspect again. That's that's really the the bread and butter of what we're doing here is just managing those those funds. So uh, that that helps from an accountability and a risk standpoint as well. Yeah, and and I think sometimes we see when we come into organizations. Uh, a lot of times we see a lot of um, uh, a lot of use of spreadsheets, a lot of manual processes um, that that really are hard from a risk perspective for auditors to auditors and, and financial professionals to to live with in, a, in the long term. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I can actually give a really good example of that because I worked with an organization early on. Um, that was using spreadsheets to track the, all of their restricted fund balances. And they had this very elaborate, I mean, it was a very well put together spreadsheet. I mean, they knew what they were doing. Um, they were experts in Excel um, and, they, and they had hundreds and hundreds of funds. So, I mean, it was a very complex uh, spreadsheet and they were using it for years and years and years and it would roll forward and it would do everything that uh, a system like Financial Edge would do in the sense that you can see fund balances. But what happened, you know, one, one instance was uh, a formula got overwritten um, along the way, and basically these balances were inaccurate for months, if not years, because of this one little mistake. And it's as simple as maybe somebody accidentally clicking on a cell and typing something in, and it wasn't caught for a good period of time. And, and it really caused issues moving forward because they had to figure out how to deal with that. And that's when we talk about that risk piece, that's the stuff that keeps, you know, accountants and, and, and fundraisers up at night is making sure that things are being properly accounted for. And, and when you have items like spreadsheets and, and things being tracked, very important pieces to the organization such as fund balances being tracked externally, you're really putting yourself at risk. And so having this integrated system allows you to kind of get that better, better night's sleep because you know the system's tracking it. There's not much, if any, human input to it. And the less human input, less hands you have in the pot, the less opportunity there is for error. And so that, that's really, you know, from that standpoint, like that's to me number one, risk number one. Outside of that, from an audit perspective, you know, just cutting down and being able to get items in the system that auditors can look at firsthand without having to uh, manually keep a lot of extra documentation. You can store all of this right within the system. It really gives you the ability to have a much more streamlined audit um, as well as preparation of 990s. And so when, when you have that, it really cuts down on, on some of those big key areas of risk. Yeah, Tammy, I'm going to let you talk on this next topic because I think it, it really 
goes down to really being able to have this information at your fingertips where you guys can do the good work that you do on the fundraising development side. I'm going to let you talk a little bit about uh, having that available to you. Right, and so, I mean, with Razor's Edge NXT, um, like you said, having that information at your fingertips, I, I go back again to that custom insight designer tool that I absolutely love um, because what I've been, I've been able to do is utilize that, especially for COVID-19 with everything that was happening, we were able to put together a quick report on those uh, donations and really break it down. It's almost like a, you know, like a Power BI tool where we can actually do an executive summary maybe for the CEO of the hospital and he or she can see exactly where the donations have come in. They can be broken out by location. Um, they can show the, him the new donors. Um, so we've been re that was really impressive to be able to, to pull that executive summary together so quickly. And, but the great thing is they can also go in and click directly into that uh, person's name and see, uh, get the information about it. So instead of just getting a flat report, it's a more interactive tool. Um, so right at their fingertips. Yeah, and that timeliness really inspires a lot of confidence, too. Yes, definitely. So I, I know that this one's, uh, this next point's really, uh, really right on uh, both your guys' alleys, talking about uh, being able to track what's important to, to your organization uh, with these solutions. So I'll let you guys talk a little bit about some of the, the non-financial and financial data that we're able to to help track and maybe some of the some of the impact of that. Yeah, so I'll touch a little bit um, on the EPI side that I think is a really another really cool feature um, that's available in the NXT environment is this ability to track kind of non-financial data, which in most systems don't allow you to do this, right? Like it's it's either what shows up on the income statement and balance sheet or or, or nothing else, and and what real, Financial Edge and XT really gives you the ability to do is track what's important to your organization. You know, what do you need to report on? What do your donors want to see? Uh, what's going to help you from an organization standpoint? And you can build it in the way you want and customize it in the way you want. And one of the really cool features is this ability to do the non-financial data, and, and it's an area called statistical units within the, in the NXT environment. And what, you know, what I've seen that be used for, you know, for instance, is um, – you know, we work with, you know, a hospital and, you know, we as a foundation have a, a restricted fund called patient financial assistance, which a lot of places do. Uh, and, and you can see the money going in and the money coming out, but what that doesn't always tell you is, you know, what impact is, is being made. And so by using something such as statistical units, you can actually track how many people were helped with this. You can assign to that project or that fund uh, a statistical units where you can track, we helped, you know, we spent $1,000 that helped, you know, 50 different people, you know, with medical bills that they couldn't cover uh, or helped, you know, their family stay in a hotel while they were, were, while they were in the hospital. So you can really kind of, those are the pieces that really impact on the donor side of things. You can relate, you know, not just, uh, hey, we spent your $1,000 and we spent it on financial assistance. You can actually give them real life scenarios that I think really make an impact at the donor level. And, and then obviously for us accountants, it's the financial piece, helping us with 990s audits, being able to track the information that we need to report for grants. Uh, and the system allows us to be able to do that so we can better manage uh, all of those pieces. And I already spoke a little bit on the appeals and events. It, it just all around gives you better uh, ability to make decisions moving forward so much, and Tammy spoke on this, so much of what we do is just um, deal with what's happened in the past and not necessarily plan for the future. And so by having a system in place that allows you to not just be putting fires out all the time, but kind of plan to prevent those fires it is really invaluable. And so that's, that's kind of where, you know, I see this, you know, what's important to your organization. And maybe, I don't know, Tammy, if you have anything else that you could share from the fundraising side of it. Yeah, I mean, Jamie, I think that the, the thing you were talking about, the statistical units, when I heard about it, I was very excited because from a fundraising development side of the house, you can do the math on that. So you can report back to your donors, as Jamie said. We helped um, 10 people with their financial assistance. We put 25 people up in hotels when their loved ones were sick. So you can actually do that calculation and know the data you're giving your donor to, to, to kind of report back the impact 
and for future gifts. When you go out to ask a future gift, you can say, do you want to do $1,000 to help this many people, $10,000 to help this many people? Tammy, I know one of the things that you're really passionate about is, is how do we make the business case um, in the healthcare, hospital, foundation environment for fundraising. Can you talk a little bit about how these tools help with that? Um, yeah, and actually, I'll, I'll touch a little bit on that, Greg. Um, what I and, and I did this, you know, for my ten years work. I worked for a large health healthcare system, and it was the constant challenge. And I know I'm not the only one, but from uh, you know, when we're dealing with foundations and we're dealing with hospitals, they're just two different animals, right? When many times hospitals are billion dollar organizations, and with foundations, you know, we're we're lucky to be in the millions, right? So from a dollars to dollars standpoint, we're never going to be material when it comes to um, the amount of money that comes in and flows through a hospital. So how do we how do we define ourselves and show that we're just as important um, a, as anybody else within that organization? And what I found to be pretty successful is now, um, let's not talk about just pure dollars coming on the door. Let's talk about, and, and I know it's, it's not a bad word in nonprofit, but let's talk about the profit on that, right? And so when we are talking about hospitals, many times um, hospitals are making, you know, two cents on every dollar they spend. And, and, and you get, um, you know, a two, you know, 2% uh, profit margin on your, on your investment. Whereas with really well-run foundations and, and uh, supporting organizations can, can, get their cost per dollar raise down to 25 cents, right? So you're making 75 cents on every dollar uh, that, you, that you raise. And so when, when we're looking, especially around budget time, and, and usually the first place that folks look at, you know, at, from the hospital level is, you know, let's look at cutting expenses. Let's look at cutting staff because we, we need to uh, um, get our expenses down. Well, the point I really try to drive home is let's, let's flip the script on that a little bit and let's say let's, let's figure out how to raise more money because we can spend 25 cents and raise a dollar. Then, then if you can get them to change that mindset, that's really, really when you turn the corner because you, you got to get it away from the expense mindset and get it into the fundraising mindset. And when you can do that and you can prove that you can do that, that's when the game really changes, and that's when you really do truly get a voice uh, with, with the large hospital systems. Yeah, that's a really, really good point. I uh, appreciate you making that. Um, for us today, so uh, maybe maybe we'll look at the the next question is, what do you guys see the financial stewardship success looking like, um, and how best do we enable folks to be better financial stewards? Yeah, I think I, I'm to, to me successful financial stewardship is the ability to. Uh, be able to get real-time data, and when I say real-time, I mean within um, not just days, but within hours even uh, of data being put in the system, and and being able to get that data at your fingertips, and be able to have it when you're out at a meeting with a donor. Right? I mean, all of this is web-based now, so you can be on your phone, you can pull up a report, and, and the, one of the really nice things about uh, Financial Edge NXT and Razor's Edge NXT is this. The, the idea of these dashboards and these analysis tools that you can get and you can really customize to what um, is important to you within that organization. So an accountant may have one set of a dashboard, the fundraiser may have a different set. And when you're out with a donor, being able to easily pull up and say, hey, it looks like, you know, we've got this much money in this project, you know, this is how much we spent, you know, and be able to give real-time data as to how their money was being used. Uh, and, and being able to kind of use that as a complement to the Razor's Edge database, uh, to me, that's where, and when we're talking about the donor side, that's how financial stewardship is, is successful, being able to get that data quickly. Because in the world of financial data, dated information is just not, I mean, it's basically worthless. If you're, if you're dealing with stuff from two months ago, it means nothing to you today. So the ability to get that real time at your fingertips um, at a moment's notice, when you're in a meeting, when you're meeting with a donor, that to me is, you know, successful financial stewardship um, that really goes a long way from the donor side of things as well. Yeah, yeah Tammy, Jamie, can you talk I think, a little I bit about I'm... the impact of that? 
Oh, I, the impact? No, no, I, was, I, I was asking Tammy if she could talk a little bit about the impact. Like oh, being yeah. armed with that data going in for that, that, that meeting with the donor, that's got to be pretty powerful, right, Tammy? Very powerful. I mean, I think when you sit down and you do your written proposal and you have that information and you have it broken out, like how much could a $1,000 gift versus a $10,000 gift make a difference or even a planned gift, um, could, how much could that make a difference to the organization? Um, I think that's hugely important. The other thing I wanted to bring up from a, a success for donor stewardship on the you know, uh, foundation side or development side of the house is utilizing some of the custom insights to bring some quick information about donors and where you're at um, with their donor moves. Um, I have actually worked with some organizations that had very long time fundraisers and when that person left, all of the information went with them because they never tracked it at all in the razor's edge. And in NXT, it's a, you can develop a very quick process. I always tell people when you're going to develop a moves management system to keep it simple. And within RENXT, you can actually meet with a donor, pull up the information on your phone, and enter that action and then what you asked for, um, and then report on that information. I'm, right now, I'm, um, I've been developing some what we're calling stoplight reports with some of our organizations that we support where um, we can say this donor is in the red, yellow, or green stage, and, and what that comes from is how many days they've been in a certain stage. Um, and because a lot of times we, I've seen organizations where they have someone in, um, you know, be in solicitation mode for 500 days. That just doesn't seem right. So if they can have this information at their fingertips, meet with the development staff, and really walk through exactly where they're at with those donors, and making sure none of the donor stewardship falls through the cracks, I think it's just hugely important to any successful donor stewardship program. I think that's a re really good point, really good point. So we're going to ask one more question of our audience here before we get to our, our closing. Um, and it gets back to this idea of timeliness. Uh, how, how long does it take you to receive financial information to share with donors, your board, or other internal stakeholders? Is it hours, days? weeks or months? I'll give you guys a second to answer those questions. And then, then we'll, we'll, we'll let uh, Tammy and Jamie tell you how long they think they can make it. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we got 100% uh, of the respondents in the weeks uh, bucket. Can you guys maybe talk a little bit about uh, how we can uh, help improve that? Yeah, and, and we had kind of talked about it a little bit throughout the presentation, but that's not abnormal, right? That's normally what you see, especially when you're reliant on um, other components of the organization to, or other areas of the organization to get you that data. Uh, you kind of, not that you don't have that independence, but you kind of lose some of that independence where you can, you know, swiftly make decisions and you're kind of at the behest of the large organization. So by having a system like a, an integrated system like a Razor's Edge, a Financial Edge working together, you can really get that, that data, you know, in, in hours and days, not weeks, right? And, and, and truly, it's, it's kind of the fund balances. Yeah, I don't want to say that the, the fundraisers don't care about financial statements, but that's not the most important aspect of, to their job. It's, it's these, the meeting the restrictions, it's the donor stewardship part of it. And so that type of data, you know, as long as you have good systems in place and good processes to get the data from one system to the next and are processing everything daily, you can have that information within hours of it being processed, right? It's instantaneously when it goes from one system to the next. So you can cut that down uh, by so much time and, and, and really be able to truly use that instead of just kind of using it as a, you know, a footnote for future decisions. You can actually use it real time and, and be able to make decisions on the fly, which with anybody in a much larger organization, that's usually the biggest hurdle, right, is being able to quickly make decisions. Most organizations that are larger, you know, move at glacial speed. And so being able to act a little bit more quickly and be able to pivot when you need to pivot is really invaluable. And Jamie, I think that uh, that's a great point, that we've actually experienced this in you know, our past um, where maybe that, you know, the hospital is doing the accounting, and it's not that they don't want to get to the foundation um, accounting part of it, but they just don't have the time and the resources to do so. 
So what we've seen a lot of is that foundations having their own um, accounting staff that really understand nonprofit accounting as well um, and utilizing the razor's edge and, and financial edge to kind of make them a little more autonomous and maybe they can just report those numbers up to the bigger system instead of waiting on the system to report out to them. That's a, that's a really good point. And I, I know the, the point of doing all of this is really being able to get back to focus on the mission and focus on raising more dollars and being better stewards of the dollars we raise. But it really is about delivering on that, that hope for the mission. Um, I, Tammy, I, I know that you guys do a lot of work with a lot of, a lot of great clients of ours and clients of yours as well. How do you guys start out with somebody? in a journey to help them improve in, in the stewardship function? You know, a lot of times what we've done is we've actually offered kind of a free assessment of uh, their Razor's Edge database. And the reason we do it for free is we just kind of do like maybe a five-point inspection uh, of their database and then as well as the, maybe the financial edge database mm -hmm. and see how are they talking together. Was their general ledger even set up properly for what they need? Um, so we try to reach out and say, hey, we'll take a look at this and we'll deliver those results to you. And then if you want to engage us, if you want to clean that stuff, those things up yourself, go ahead. But if you want to engage us, we can do it, actually do the work for you. Yeah, you, get, you guys have a lot of experience in this. So uh, coming in and, and getting a good assessment and getting some, some fresh eyes on it sometimes is a, a really good impetus to make some, some great improvement and, again, deliver more on that mission. Yeah, I think what really sets us apart is being the end users of this product for 20 and 30 years, right? We kind of scraped our knees. We, we saw what worked and what didn't work, and so now we're able to kind of share that experience with other folks, and it, it kind of cuts down on that, that curve it takes to really get something up and running because we can uh, kind of share. I, 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 I like to say we've scraped our knees. We know we want to help you prevent you know, running into the same pitfalls that we ran into. And so we're able to kind of share that experience and provide guidance or suggestions for other organizations. Yeah, and I think that's, uh, you know, when I talk to clients that have worked with you guys, that's the thing that stands out to me is you guys really bring uh, best practice to the entirety of the, the foundation process uh, and the philanthropy process at, at the hospitals you guys work with. So um, I really appreciate that. I, I know uh, our next uh, question here is uh, interest in, in maybe getting some time with you guys uh, to talk about their, their current stewardship practices and current solutions. And I hope that some folks will uh, take you guys up on those initial assessments. And then uh, secondarily, if you might want to have somebody from my staff reach out, um, we'd be happy to do that as well and uh, get in touch with you about how our solutions might be able to help your organization improve as well. So with that, We'll, uh, we'll turn to some, some Q&A in the uh, Q&A box. I don't know whether we have any there, Elise, or not, but um, I'll open the mic up for you and um, let you tell us what might be waiting on us. Sure. Thank you, Greg. Um, and thank you all for uh, the lively conversation. It's been great. Um, there have been a couple questions, and I will remind everyone that there is the Q&A module. So if you, if anything pops up in your head now, feel free to submit it. And if we don't touch on it now, we'll uh, make sure to follow up with you afterwards. Um, so this first one, I'm going to throw to you, Tammy, um, to start because you touched on a little bit earlier in the presentation. Um, it's, but I, you know, it's an important topic. So I think you know it's worth bringing up again. Is you know, we've received so many in-kind donations uh, during the COVID pandemic. Is there a way to track those between Razor's Edge and Financial Edge so that finance can see those bank donations? Yeah, definitely. And I think that I, I have to go back to the point again of how important it is to work with your finance team to uh, determine how you're going to track those gifts in kind. Because, as I said, I've worked with several organizations. Some uh, do the value of the gift in kind as zero. Um, but then some of them have, um, have worked it out with their finance department where they say, okay, as long as you have some proof of the fair market value of that gift, you can absolutely put that information in. Um, and a lot of times they put that um, information, they put maybe the gift amount in the razor's edge as zero and the receipt amount as whatever that value is. Because truthfully, that, you know, that's really between the donor and the IRS to kind of come up with that value. 
Um, one thing that's very important is not ever putting, you know, gift and kind values into a the thank you letter back to the donor, because um, again, that's not really up to us to determine that value. Um, but you can put that information in the system um, to be fair on the fundraising side of the house, but then also working with your finance department to decide what you want to pull across or not to the general ledger. Yeah, and and that's the key. I mean, I, I think the. You want to definitely track it on the RE perspective because you want to track everything that a donor does to support the organization. Obviously, with gift and kinds, it's a little more tricky than just a cash gift. So there are certain regulations and criteria that have to be met, you know, because we have those pesky auditors that will follow <laughs> up on it. But um, certainly, that information can be pulled across to FB if it meets all the criteria and has all the proper paperwork as well. Great, thank you both. Um, and one other question we received is, uh, some of our events, uh, special events, have certain tax ramifications. Uh, do these solutions help the finance team track those tax requirements or anything related to the special taxes? So um, really, so in the razor's edge, if um, you have the event module, you can actually set up the entire event and put the information regarding maybe the sponsorships and what is the, you know, what goods and services are they receiving? So what's the taxable amount versus non-taxable amount? You can set that all up ahead of time. Um, and so that really does help when it comes across to the acknowledgement letters um, to the donor. Um, and it can, that information does come across to the financial edge as well. Yeah, the, it's very important, obviously, to A, from a donor perspective, make sure they're being credited with what they should be when it comes to events. But from a finance perspective, also knowing what is a cost of direct benefit to go donor versus what is an actual contribution to the organization. So the ability to be able to track those within RE and then pull that information in the FE is just another point as to how an integrated system can really help streamline that process so you're not having to manually track that and then manually record it and do journal entries on that financial side of things. So just another instance of having those integrated systems can really help streamline things. Well, another riff on that would be from an operational perspective. I mean, we, we, the pandemic has brought about some interesting decisions and uh, reflections for all of us. And, and part of that is we, we haven't been able to have the same level of events that we may have had uh, in a philanthropy office previously, and it really gives us a chance to go pause and maybe look at some ROI. Can you guys talk a little bit about how the systems support that as well? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think um, when you when you can put your event into an appeal code, I think that's really tracking that information. How many people were invited? How many people were attended? How much money did it raise? But so we always kind of talk about that, but really what did it cost you? And not just what did it cost in, you know, supplies and venue, invitations and all that, but what did it cost in, in you know, time for the development staff? Um, because I do see, I have seen organizations that put on a, an amazing gala, but it takes them six months of the year to prep for it. And, those, and the, because we have limited resources, fundraisers are typically the ones going out and taking care of all that. Um, would they be better served maybe becoming a major gift office instead of, you know, doing that event? Um, but really, if you can just take the time to track that information in the Razor's Edge for a year or so, you can kind of look at the ROI. Was it, was it worth it? Some events absolutely are. Some are mm -hmm. signature events, and they're events that friend raise, too. You know, I mean, and there's a lot of stewardship that happens. I'm not saying that events are not important, but it is important to track that information for each of your events Determine the ROI, determine if it's worth it or not going forward. Yeah, and on that donor goodwill topic, I know that um, Elise mentioned earlier some of the resources that we have related to the COVID and the pandemic and some of the some of the, I know we have some really good content on the, the pivot with events and trying to make sure that we still get the goodwill and the kind of the soft ROI that we got out of those events. Um, even though we may not be getting the hard ROI that we would normally get from a dollars and cents perspective. So I'd encourage, you know, we have some great thought leadership on that. Um, and, and obviously Tammy and Jamie have some good, good experience in that environment as well to be able to talk about what they've seen in the field and how we might want to pivot and adapt. Yeah. 
Yeah, Alicia, absolutely. any other questions? Um, and I will, to your point, um, I will make sure that, we, you know, those specific resources I will include in our follow-up email um, if anyone's interested. So we'll look for that. Um, but that is all of our questions. Is there anything else you want to cover before we wrap up today? No, I just, uh, just a real sincere thanks to Tammy and Jamie for joining us today and Elise for for helping produce our, our webinar for us. Uh, hope the audience has enjoyed it as much as I know that we've enjoyed talking with each other again uh, here this afternoon and uh, appreciate all of the perspectives and great expertise that you guys were able to share with us. Yeah, absolutely, and, and thank you, Greg, too. It's always always good to, to do one of these with you as well. Great. Okay. Well, thank you again, everyone. We really appreciate you taking the time to be here today, and uh, we will look for you on the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay.